Okay, so the next speaker is Anastasia Volovic, who will tell us about simplifying scattering amplitudes in n equal to four young mills. All right. Uh, thank you very much. So first of all, it's a great pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me to give a talk. So the title of my talk is uh, Simplifying Scattering Amplitudes in N equals to 4 Young Mills Theory. And no, this is not a typo. Uh, the word simplifying comes from the word symbol. And I'm gonna, this is what I'm going to try to explain to you today. And this is based on um, uh, the work, the paper that uh, we've written and some also work in progress. So this is together with uh, Sasha Goncharov. Mark Spradlin and um, our postdoc, very good postdoc, very hardworking, uh, Christian Virgu. Okay, so let's, uh, let's start. Okay, scattering amplitudes. So uh, in the past few years, we've seen a lot of progress in uh, our understanding of uh, both the mathematical structures in gauge theories and also in our ability to actually compute things, in our ability to do these computations both for theoretical and phenomenological purposes. And there are all sorts, sorts of results. So the remarkable resu results range from the precision predictions in QCD, and these are uh, very important and very useful for understanding the LHC data. Also, there are new miraculous structures discovered both in N equals to 4 Young Mills theory and N equals to 8 uh, supergravity. And you've heard a very nice talk by um, Henriette earlier today reviewing some of these um, discoveries. Uh, the goal of this research program is a twofold. So first, we want to, you know, explore this hidden mathematics, you know, this hidden mathematics which is hiding in the structure of amplitudes. And secondly, not only we want to explore this, we want to use this structure, we want to exploit this structure as much as possible to make previously impossible computations trivial. And I'm going to give you some of the most recent uh, examples in this, in this um, uh, field. So there are a lot of people who contributed to these recent developments. So I'm, I included uh, a partial list. I tried hard to mention everybody. Uh, what I'm going to do in my talk today, I'm going to present to you a new and a very powerful tool for analysis of actually multi-loop amplitudes. This is a, a, an object uh, called symbol of an amplitude. This is, this is why the title is simplifying. And it actually um, comes from, um, from um, modern mathematics called the theory of motives. And you know, Sasha Goncharov is an expert in this. And it turned to be very, very useful and uh, powerful for, for, our, for the purposes of, um, of uh, actual computation. So it's a really, you know, we, we, you know, we were able to, I'll show you an example of what we've done. So this was an example of an N amplitude, but it, you know, more generally, it's a very general tool which lets you simplify things uh, dramatically. It, not only that, it captures the essential physical content of the amplitude, so it tells us the, a lot about like, things like discontinuities of, of an amplitude. So maybe you know, some people say, you know, I care about the amplitudes, we just care about uh, symbols. I'll, I'll uh, t talk, tell you more about it. So here's the plan of my talk. So I'm going to start with a quick you know, recap of where we are in n equals to 4 and what the simplest amplitudes are. And then I'm, I'm going to proceed. So I present a problem for what we want to do. And then I'm going to you know, use this uh, motivic technique. So I'm going to define what the symbol is. So this would be a physicist definition you know, just by working through a couple of simple examples and explain why this symbol is very useful. So you will see you know, very precisely why this is uh, really powerful. And then I'm going to present uh, results for particular, particular uh, scattering amplitudes. And then I'm going to conclude with, with an outlook. All right, so uh, 
Henriette this morning already reviewed um, a lot of lot about um, n equals to four Young Mills uh, uh, recent discoveries. So I made a partial list. So we learned uh, a lot recently. So there's a, an appearance of new symmetries, dual conformal symmetries, Youngian symmetries. There is a triality between amplitudes, Wilson loops, and correlation functions. There are color kinematic relations that, um, that Henrik talked about yesterday. And then there's also a, a bigger picture with Grassmannians and all loop integrands, polytop pictures, and uh, twisters. And of course, there's also uh, ADS CFT stroke coupling results uh, available uh, for these amplitudes. All right, so th this, this, th th there's a lot we learned, but what is, I just want to emphasize an important lesson, one of the you know, important lessons. So all these things, in particular things like dual conformal, um, um, dual conformal invariants and you know, Grassmannian, so all of these are completely invisible in the Lagrangian. And the way all these things were discovered in the past years, they were discovered after doing very hard calculations. So people did, the people really marched on, they, 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 they for example, the way dual conformal invariance was first discovered, they, people looked at two integrals and magic, found ma magic identities between them, and then, of course, went on to write generators and so on. So people, you know, did very hard calculations, then they tried to simplify the calculations, analyze the answers, and, of course, the simplifica any simplifications you find, they don't, happen by accident. So there's, you know, this is in a way an experimental science. You go dig some data, compute some amplitudes, then you find, you try to, you know, find the hidden structures. But of course, you know, before marching on into this hard calculations, you, you got to have faith. And, you know, you have to believe that simplicity, you know, simplicity has to be believed to be seen. So you really, you know, you don't march on, you know, doing some you know, five loop computations, you really, you know, if you just get some mess, you probably wouldn't want to do it. So you really, you really have to believe that this, the n equals to four Young Mills is a very, uh, very uh, nice uh, theory. All right, uh, so where do we stand in n equals to four? So this is a, I try to put a little simple picture here. Okay, so how do we compute these amplitudes? So, okay, you know what we do, we, we draw some you know, we will look at multi-loops now. We draw some integrals, right? So we have Feynman diagrams and some other techniques. So we have an integrand, so some pictures, and then we actually have to integrate. So we have to, to you know, integrate, you know, like one loop over, you know, one integral over loop momenta, etc. So, and, and then you, you integrate and you, you find your amplitude. Okay, very good. So, so where do we stand? So, Recently, I think it's fair to say, in the past year, the integrand, so the object which enters here, has been solved by uh, Nima Arkani Hamed um, and Frederica Chazo and um, collaborators uh, to all loops and all legs in n equals to four Young Mills theory. So they've, they've written this non local forms, the recursion relations, and then they, uh, they, they actually, you know, they, they've, uh, they, they've um, you know, they told us what the integrand is. So, for example, uh, if you look at two-loop uh, um, two MOHV amplitude, this is, this is the answer. So they have very impressive uh, results. But, of course, okay, that's, that's an integral, integrand. Now you have to do an integral. You have to, you know, you have to evaluate an integral. And this is still very, very hard. So, you know, people, of course, this is also not just any, I mean, the same integrals appear in QCD, so there are others too, but, you know, and a lot of um, QCD people, you know, look at actually how you do these integrals and, you know, higher loops, and, you know, there are, there are books written uh, on this, for example, uh, Smirnov has a book, and this is the step which still requires a lot, of, a lot of work, a lot of blood and tears, and really a lot, you know, new technology is needed here. Okay, and so essentially a recap of what I'll try to say is that um, this, I'm going to introduce something called symbol, and what it, roughly speaking is, is going to be, it's going to be halfway between the integrand 
and uh, an actual amplitude. So we're gonna, you know, it's gonna be a halfway. So we're gonna take the integrand, and, and there'll be some object in between, but it's gonna capture a lot about about the amplitude. Okay, so let's let's uh, start a bit uh, slow. So we are looking at planar n equals to four Young Mills um, theory. So what are what are you know we want to do loops. What is the simplest, well, simplest, not trivial, and I'm going to explain momentarily, multi-loop amplitude? Okay, this, as Henriette mentioned in her talk already, so if uh, you look at four and five point amplitudes in n equals to four Young Mills theory, they are fully determined by dual, by dual conformal uh, symmetry. So you actually can write word identity, you can solve it, and uh, you know, the, uh, at two loops, essentially, the um, four and five points are given in terms of so-called BDS ansatz, where it's just essentially an exponent of uh, one loop. And, and of course, I should say three and uh, one loop uh, amplitudes are completely solved. So the first non-trivial case would be the sixth particle MHV amplitude. And so if um, you start Looking at it, so first you you know you do it in a dimensional regularization. You subtract the infrared divergences, and they're captured by so-called BDS ansatz. So again, you can write some word identity, and you solved it. And what what is left is a function of um, it's called remainder function. It's a function of three dual conformal invariant cross ratios. And uh, essentially, for four and five po points, if you if you uh, look at what these, the basically, essentially there are no uh, dual conformal invariant cross ratio which exists, so the first non-trivial one appears um, uh, at two loop and six, uh, six particles. Okay, so this is the simplest, the simplest amplitude. So here I've written explicitly, so this is a, a remainder function, what's left after you subtract the known infrared divergences and their techniques, how to deal with this, I, I'm not going to write them down. But this is a function which we are after. So this is a quantity which, which is left after we subtract it. And you know, okay, so how, how, what do we know about it? Well, you know, uh, you know we computed, uh, a lot of work went into numerical computation of it. This has been known since uh, our paper in 2008, and we computed it using, uh, you know, in usual amplitudes, and uh, these guys computed it using Wilson loops. This is, you know, in the early days of this Wilson loop amplitude duality. Okay, but we want to do better, right? So we want to, you know, this is the simplest amplitude. We'd like to be able to, you know, to write some analytic formula. You know, numerics is not enough. Okay, so a um, uh, year and a half ago, um, in a truly heroic effort, Dilduka, Dura, and Smirnov, they actually um, evaluated, so they've, they've drawn all the uh, integrals, and they actually computed them. And, you know, these are really, uh, you know, hardcore people, and they, you know, they do real QCD um, computations, and so they looked at these integrals, and they, you know, they use the most powerful modern techniques available, and they obtained an analytic formula for it. So let me show you what they obtained. So these are, uh, this is called DDS formula. So here I've written, you know, in a small print. And notice this is copied from their paper. It's so page number 99 of their paper. You can find an expression. So this is uh, a remainder function. Again, two loops, six points as a function of u1, u2, u3. And so you have some, some expression with special functions, some polylogs called Goncharov polylogs, and momentarily I'm going to explain what these are. So then that, go that goes on, you know. And, and, you know, it's 17 pages, so we had page, you know, 115. And again, I emphasize this is the most powerful to date methods that were used at the time. So these people, you know, they do real QCD loop integrations, and Smirnov is an author of the, of the um, books on how to do these integrals. Okay, that's, if that's the answer, well, you know, maybe we should abandon n equals to four Young Mills theory. You know, this is, you know, if this is the simplest amplitude, you know, can you imagine what, what's gonna happen if we go, you know, higher loops, higher, uh, 
uh, higher number of legs. But of course, as I you know explained, we we gotta have faith. We really you know we really believe that n equals to four is the is the nicest theory, and you know we gotta we gotta simplify. So we saw this, and you know we really you know you look at this and you start wondering, okay, you know, what do you do? Okay, so we really and yeah, and I should say some people ask me, no, full we tr people tried to, you know not only simplifying, they tried full simplify command, and it doesn't work, you know. So <laughs> and and there are packages for these special functions available. Yes, people tried that, so it's not like you know this is you're just uh, copying output of Mathematica. So full simplify command is not enough, and what we need we need a serious weapon to battle this 17-page uh, monster. Okay, so this is what uh, I'll try to, I'll try to uh, 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 explain to you. So how do we proceed? So what do we? We have this horrible expression, 17 pages, special functions. What do we do? Okay, so what are the? F Let me just, you know, just quickly go over uh, some steps of what's the cast of characters. So what what are the type of functions that that we see? So the classical poly log. So first of all, if this is the transcend. If you look at this object, this is transcendentality four object. So as you know, there's a trans. You know, n equals to four. There's a, you know, this transcendentality principle. So the class. So for example, classical poly log weight weight k is uh, given. You know, recursively like this. So weight one is just a log. You know, you can have lead two, lead three. So there's some lead fours. And as you know, they satisfy various identities. So the polylogs, you know, of, for example, you know, they satisfy things like that. Now, what appears in this um, in this um, monster is a more complicated function, more complicated. So these are called classical polylogs, but there's something more general. These are called Goncharov polylogs, and th these are just so. So uh, classical polylogs are defined by recursion like this, and Goncharov polylogs you can put some parameters here. So basically for uh, uh, for a equals zero, you get classical polylogs. For a equals plus minus one, you get what's called harmonic polylogs. And for that, there are also packages which take care of of these um, identities. So, okay. So how do we? What do we do? We have these special. Oh yeah, I should also mention that not only there are these complicated functions, the arguments of, on, of the functions are also very complicated as functions of these three variables: u1, u, u3, u1, u2, and u3. All right, so how do we bring these identities under control? Of course, maybe this is not what comes to your mind immediately. Well, that's what comes out to Goncharov immediately, since you see a lot of Goncharov polylogs. Well, we're going to use what he, said, what he calls Motsivic high tech. So we got really lucky because he worked in math department next door. He recently moved, unfortunately, to Yale. So we went to him with this expression. You know, he you know, taught us. Uh, uh, this magic, so Motivic high tech. So um, let me just, um, you know, th this is a beautiful mathematics, which I'm not gonna, you know, go into. All I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just, for my purposes, uh, explain to you uh, the simple, this, you know, some of the simple notions. Okay, what is, um, so we have an, a complicated, you know, complicated expression of transcendental function. So what one can do, one can introduce an object called a symbol of a transcendental function. And apparently this is a, this is a standard thing in, in motives. And uh, so if you have a function of transcendentality k, so k equals 1 like a log, k equals 2 log log, or the 2, uh, a symbol, uh, you map a function to an element of a k-fold tensor product of the multiplicative group of rational function. And it can be defined recursively. So what you do, you have your function, you take a differential of your function, uh, and then you, you, you can write it, this is essentially the definition of the transcendental function, as a uh, function with lower degree of transcendentality times d log of some other rational function. This is essentially, so transcendental function is the one which is given by, this, uh, you know, if you write it as an integral, these are, these are, these are called uh, you know, iterated integrals. So then the symbol of, si and next slide I'm going to give examples. So, the sim so this is the recursive definition. The symbol of this function is given by the tensor product of a symbol of this object times the argument of this log. All right, so this is, this is kind of important. So now some properties become immediately obvious just from this definition. So here is the, you know, if you want to, have a symbol of some 
you know, symbol of product obeys this. And if you have some symbol is also insensitive to a constant because, you know, if you put some constant, it's, um, uh, it uh, gives you, you know, sim you know, symbol of R1 tensor C, R2 is R1 tensor C2. So let me give you examples. But this, is, this, is the, this is actually the, the most useful, uh, you know, way of thinking about it and most practical way of thinking about it. So here's some examples. So you, you know, you take your log, okay, transcendentality one, log, you take the differential, apply a definition, so the symbol is R. Transcendentality two, you have log R1, log R2, you take the differential, you get log R1 d log R2 plus log R2 d log R1. So the symbol is, as I taught you, the symbol of this times the argument, so symbol of a log is R, so the symbol is R1 times R2 plus R2 times R1. Okay, let's do a more complicated case, a Li2. So here's Li2. This is essentially the definition of Li2. Li2 is an integral of, of this thing, so the differential is given right here. So the symbol of Li2, I read off, again, so this is, this is pay attention because this is really how, you know, how everything goes. So it's so a symbol of this, a symbol of a log 1 minus r, you get uh, minus 1 minus r, and then you have d log r, so it's r. Now you can proceed. So for example, Li k recursively given by this, this is the formula I had on the pre one of the pre this is essentially the definition of the classical polylog. So you get the k tensor product of these things, so you have 1 minus r, tensor tensor r, r, r. Okay, very good. So I defined for you some objects. So why is this useful? Well, the reason this is useful, uh, it makes, uh, essentially it makes all the polylog identities trivial to work out. And it takes care of, um, it basically, you know, it basically converts the polylog functional equations into some algebraic identity. So let me give you an example. So if really, if we, I, I just work out this example, it's all pretty, you know, the idea, the basic idea is pretty clear. So let's take this identity. So we know that, you know, Li2 of x plus Li2 of minus x is one half Li2 of x squared. Okay? Very good. Now let's take symbol of both sides. So I taught you on the previous slide, so symbol of Li2 of x minus 1 minus x tensor x. Symbol of Li2 of minus x, so change plus x to minus x, minus 1 plus x tensor minus x. So it's, you can drop this minus 1, remember the property. And then what you do, you combine, so this, I, I can drop this minus 1. Now I combine 1 minus x and 1 plus x, right? And I write it as minus 1 minus x squared tensor x. Right? Then I taught you another property that you can rewrite this x as you can pull out the one half and you write it as x squared. So you write it, so is that clear? This is really the, the core of this whole, the whole idea. So, so you, at the very end you get minus one half, one minus x squared tensor x squared. And this is nothing but the symbol of one half lead to of x squared. Is that any question here? Yeah? Is it, this is clear? Okay, so that, that, that's, that's essentially the idea. So we had this identity, but this is totally, completely trivial. So, so you, 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 know, you have symbol of right-hand side equals symbol of left-hand side. Okay, so, so this would have been great, of course, except, you know, I've done the, you know, this is, I've done the most simple case. You can go on and, for example, you can get, you know, there are these five-term identities and it's complete triviality, one-line computation to, to, to prove them with a symbol. Of course, uh, one thing I, I sort of skipped, uh, uh, which, which, which I could illustrate right here. So let's take this identity. And you see, the one I used here didn't have any constants. But of course, as soon as I have some constant here, uh, symbol misses that, right? So here, here's another identity. So I write the symbol of Li2 of Z. I write Li2 of 1 minus Z. I've uh, uh, actually, I, this should go here, this should go here. I, I switch the order, and then log z log 1 minus z, this is z 1 minus z plus 1 minus z z, and that's zero. And of course, you know, you check that this is equal zero. So what symbol does for you, it does fix only the leading functional transcendentality piece. So you have to, you know, you have to have a, a postdoc later on to fix the, you know, subleading, you know, pi terms. You have to do, you have to do some, some work. So, but, but the leading, trans, leading functional transcendentality piece is fixed. 
Okay, so very good. So hopefully I, I sort of sketched for you, of course, I gave a very trivial example of how, the, how, you, you know, how we do, how we work on these uh, identities. Um, of course, you know, in reality, you can go ahead and, you know, for these Goncharov polylogs, you can work out their symbols. You can, you know, think that they satisfy a lot of identities, but it to com becomes totally, completely, you know, easy and, you know, very enlightening to, to work at, at the level of symbol of them. So I'm going to skip, I'm just, I just gave you a trivial example, but, but trust me, so you take this 17-page expression, you... You, you go ahead and compute its symbol by the rules I told you. And it, the, the first miraculous thing that happened is very simple. It has many nice properties and has a lot of symmetries. And moreover, it's a base. Goncharov has, uh, had a, a very nice uh, Ethereum 20 years ago, which is impossible to, of course, get it from his paper. But So he explained it to us. A certain property of a symbol, roughly speaking, that a symbol wedged with itself is uh, uh, zero. I'm, not, I don't have time to explain this, but uh, that you know, once we saw the symbol, um, uh, we could use that theorem and and, and have a, you know his, the proof is of that theorem is not constructive, but at least we can say that okay, probably the answer should just contain only classical polylogs. So, but we still okay. If I I just you know showed you or some other of my amplitude friends you know say okay, symbol is simple. They wouldn't believe me. They'll tell me okay, you better find a function. So we have to reconstruct the function now from the symbol. And it is in in, in general, it's a non-trivial exercise. You need some luck and guessing. So for example, I illustrated here. Suppose I give you a symbol like that, and how do you know what function to write? You need to do some trick to recognize that this is actually Li2 of x cubed plus Li2 of x. So this is, a, this is an example of what kind of things go into this. OK, so and of course, you need to also fix the lower transcendentality pieces. And we spend a lot of time you know, working very hard. And you have to fix all the branch cuts. Because of course, you know, the 17-page the mess was available. You can you know, put any of your momenta there. You can get you know, whatever numeric. You really need the whole function. So after all uh, everything uh, settled, we were able to you know, make a dramatic simplification. So this 17-page this mess becomes just this. Okay, so it's a one-line formula, except there are three-line definitions of what uh, all, the <laughs> all the functions are. But essentially, what the, it's really remarkable. What, what happens is that the, the most complicated function which appears is just you know, Li4. So there's Li4, Li3, Li2, et cetera. There are no Goncher Goncher of polylogs completely, completely disappear. So we, you know, we were really, really excited. And you know, once we got it, you know, we said, oh, we're gonna solve all loops, all n instantly. We just generalize it because you know, if you start staring at this, and you know, you okay, this is L4. You maybe it's like you know L6 at higher loops, and it's you know, you start playing with structures, and you really, we were really excited, but. Uh, we, we're not there yet, and I'll say what, what's been done. Uh, okay, so what's, um, what's next? Oh, I should also mention this was also, okay, so uh, this was later analyzed. Um, that some consistencies were checked in the Reggie limit, and also the symbol of this uh, function was also rederived uh, later by Gaiota, Malasena, Sever, and Vera using their uh, OP approach. So what's next? Okay, so what's next? Well, our formula for what, you know, provides a hope to, that we actually might be able to unlock the secrets of all loop amplitudes so, and connect to strong coupling. So what we want to do, of course, we want to write an amplitude strong at any loops, any number of legs, any value of the coupling. Well, we still... Uh, not, not there. You know, in, in principle, nobody really cares about the value of that particular amplitude. What we want to do, we want to, you know, write a, you know, general formula. So there's a lot uh, to do, and there's been some very nice pro uh, progress recently. So you know, do higher points. There, are, there are two things you can do. The Malsen et al. reduce the problem to the sim compute. They uh, reduced the problem to computation of one integral, so you can go and try to evaluate this. Uh, recently, there was a very uh, nice work by uh, Simon Caron Trouot, who, who presented a symbol for all n, so two loop all n's, and still this needs to be integrated, and we are working with uh, Sasha Goncharov trying to, trying to actually integrate it. There's a lot of, again, their arguments are more complicated, and it's, it's not just classical polylogs. All right, so uh, let me... Uh, how much? I have uh, five minutes. All right, so... And, you know, again, we want to do higher loops and, uh, and uh, you know, we want to 
uh, compute also non-MHV cases. But let me just uh, tell you a little bit more, more generally what we want to have. You know, the way this was obtained, we took some, you know, some integrals, people compute them, and we simplified it. What we want to do, we want to have a technology which you start with an integral, and then you get a symbol right out without, go, you know, actually evaluating it. And we are currently working on, um, on two loops to make it clear, but actually it turned out uh, recently for one loop, we were able to use even more Mativic magic to just write down the answer. So what happened is there was some flurry of activity recently on looking at, so, so this is sort of to give you a sense what we want to do for, you know, for higher loops, but recently there's been a lot, so some flurry of activities by Dixon et al. and these people uh, computing one loop hexagon in six dimensions. So there are some reasons why this is interesting. It could be related to in, in DIMREG to uh, you know, one loop MH3. It can also be related to higher loop four dimensional integral. So this is, you know, this is more general one loop 2M gone and 2M dimensions. So what these people did, they uh, looked at just massless hexagon in six dimensions, and you know, they worked hard to evaluate it, do Mellon Barnes, and what was surprising is the same function L3 appears. Remember in our answer, we had this L4, now this is an object transit L3, the same function starts appearing. Okay, so we, we thought, okay, so why, let, let's uh, wait with two loops, let's try to look more generally this one loop to M gons, and it turns out that if you study Goncharov papers on mixed state motifs, the answer is there. So it's, it's a really uh, miraculous fact uh, that if, if, you know, after Feynman parameterization, you can write any one loop 2M gone in 2M dimensions as an integral like that. You can reduce it as to, a, uh, to some quadric in CP 2M minus 1. And miraculously, Goncharov in 96 wrote a symbol and, you know, he had some other way, he was computing some cohomologies, but he had an answer in his 96 paper for this. And uh, so this is, uh, the answer is given in terms of a recursion in M. So you know, the symbol of an M gone is given um, uh, uh, as a symbol of an M minus one gone and the quadric which enters into this integral. So the quadric is a function of, of, of this uh, momentum. So boom, you just, um, you, it's, it's really, it's really, uh, exciting, you just, you know, you, you know, you stare at the integral, you write down the symbol, you write, you know, the, your recursion, you just write down the answer. So this is essentially what we want to, mm, so this is actually uh, our most uh, recent uh, work from last month. So what we want to do, of course, we want to try to, to come up with some similar technology for, you know, higher, higher loops. And unfortunately, and yes, of course, we asked, in, in, in higher loops, there's some lines appearing and the type of integrals, everything we're used to, of course, you know, we went to Goncharov, of course, we asked him for, you know, help, but it's not, it's not in the literature, but, but certainly there's some, some structure and this, this would be solved soon. Okay, so let me now, so, so this is sort of a flavor of what, you know, Mativic magic can do for you. Okay, so let me conclude. So what um, I tried to present today is, um, so the philosophy was that if, you know, you have some complicated problem, you know, you have this amplitude, the problem is too hard, maybe you should, you know, look for some tricks, you look for something simpler. And uh, that, sim that, that simpler thing was called a symbol, and it's a useful stepping stone, which is sort of a halfway between the integrand and the result of an integration. And where do we go? Okay, so besides, of course, you know, dreams to solve all couplings, all and all loops, you know, for all, not just amplitudes, of course, you know, correlation function, Wilson loops, and everything, you know. We also, in practical terms, what we need, you know, I really think if we do this, we would achieve this bigger goal. We need some technology uh, of writing down, this, j just like I illustrated for one loop, we need some technology for writing down, down symbols without first uh, evaluating them. So we really want to have some way, okay, here is an integral, you know, here's the, here's uh, its symbol. Uh, moreover, there's, um, uh, since I, uh, I mentioned that very briefly. Feynman integrals are natural projective object. That's that's how this um, um, math uh, comes about. Uh, there, there should be some bigger object, something like a Grassmannian, which not you know the, 
uh, NEMAS, Gross Money Captures Linear Singularities, but there should be a bigger object which captures actually the whole, the whole amplitude. So it would be nice if, in general, there are like recursion relations for the symbols and one big object which captures everything. So that's, uh, that's in the future. Uh, I also think, um, uh, so just to conclude, uh, maybe after all, of course, symbols are great. We, we love symbols. We, um, you know, we've learned a lot here. But maybe also the symbols are not the ultimate goal. goal and this is the simplest incarnation of a more deep, deep, of a deeper motivic structure of amplitude. So maybe if we really understand, you know, there are many people who understand, you know, both n equals to four Young Mills story and you know, theory of motives, maybe, maybe if, um, you know, we understand this, we would try, you know, this is a starting point which we are only beginning to see, but of course we've, you know, we, un we understand all the algebra and everything, um, you know, we'll, we'll learn a lot more. But, so it's very exciting and there's a lot of work to be done. So I'll stop now. Questions? Conceptually, this uh, symbols uh, of a function uh, is, is basically invariant, which is defined modular some equivalence relation. So very mm -hmm. much like K theory class that captures yes. deep brain charges, it's defined modular certain relations, which in this case are analogs of pentagon relation and five term identity and more complicated ones. Have you tried to think about meaning of these equivalence relations in your context, physical interpretation of those? Yeah, this is a very, certainly this is what one needs to, this is, this is you know, in this third category of trying to understand the deep, the bigger structure, yeah. This is, this is, the, this is exactly, no, this is exactly, you know, we, we, so we sort of know what the definition, we applied it, but we, we certainly lack the, the, the you know, we, we really need to understand it. More questions? Yeah, it works for a lot of cases. It, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, you haven't finished the question. I start interrupting with it. Uh, well, this, I mean, the symbol is actually, you need, a, for example, you know, of course, we've been talking to a lot of QCD people trying to apply this technology to them where it's not, you know, a certain degree of transcendentality. Actually, symbol is only, you know, the definition, we took the function of a particular transcendentality, so we used that very much. So that's sort of, you know, we're trying, we've been, you know, talking, well, so far it's only talking, trying, there, there are a lot of simpler, you know, we have, we now at Santa Barbara, there's this uh, uh, program on amplitudes and there are a lot of QCD people, they have, they come with their, you know, huge expressions, they want to simplify, but of course there it's not manifest transcendentality, so it's not, you can't, you need something else there. Any more questions? Okay, let's thank the speaker again.